Welcome to video 52 of series 3, and in this video I'm going to write the player ammo box script. Okay, so I'm going to make a new script and call it player ammo box, and this script is going to be a list. It's going to have a list which allows me to define weapons and their ammo. So let me just put in there player ammo box. So for example, if the player is carrying multiple pistols in their inventory, when you reload a pistol, where does the ammunition come from? So I'm going to have a central script that's on the player, this one, player ammo box, and it'll have a list on it uh, that the, and it'll have like names of weapons, and then the current ammo carried, and the max ammo that can be carried for that type of weapon. So whenever you reload a pistol, it'll take it from the ammo box. That's just, I guess, one way of doing it. It'll be pretty logical when you see it in action, unfortunately, uh, quite a bit later. In this case, we're in this video, we're just setting it up. We won't actually get to use it. Uh, anyway, using system.collections.generic, because I'm going to make use of a list. Then coming to the variables, private, uh, player master, player master. And I'm going to write a class. Uh, because I want my list to have unique information in it. So each entry in the list should have three pieces of information. It, it should have the name of the weapon, the max ammo carried, and the current ammo carried. And the way to do that is to define my own class and then uh, turn it into a variable. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. First of all, I'll put in system.serializable. You'll see what this is for later. I'll show you that. This is to make sure that this class that I make, any variables I make of that, can be seen in the inspector and edited in the inspector. Uh, so I'll, I'll comment it out at the end and show you that then you can't do anything in the inspector. Now I'm going to make a new class, so public class, and I'm going to call it ammo types. All right. Ammo types will have three variables, public, string, ammo name, public int, uh, I guess ammo current carried, public int ammo max quantity. Okay, so those are the variables. Now I need to define how they're going to be used. So I'm going to type the following, public ammo types, then in a bracket, I'll put in there um, the string, a name. So this is called a constructor. Uh, so currently the class as it is, it has these three variables, but there's no way to initialize it. So then I have to create like this method basically inside of it, where I will then define what each of these values are. Or in my case, I'll use this method and I'll pass in values and it'll get made for me. Okay, so I'll keep going. So an int, a max quantity, an int, a current carried, a just standing for ammo. And I might just swap this over just so that it's uh, matches up more nicely with what I'm doing down there. Okay, I'm going to say ammo name is equal to a name ammo max quantity is equal to a max quantity and ammo current carried is equal to a current carried. So that's my class there and it's a unique, I can make it into a unique type of variable which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Instead I'm going to have a list with this. So public list it's going to be of the type uh, it's of the type ammo box dot well actually hold on why, why am I doing that I should just put ammo types so it's of the that type and it's going to be called I'll give this list a name types of ammunition and that is going to be types of ammunition is equal to a new list and then that's where I have to put the around brackets in okay and that's my new list set up so the list is of the type ammo types and each entry in the list will have these three values, which is very useful and very important for what we're going to do. 
Okay, so I think that's my variables done. Now I need to start setting up the methods. And I don't think I'll be needing the start and update methods, so I'll get rid of those. I will need on enable, on disable, yes, set initial references, and I'm going to need another one as well. This one is void picked up ammo. And I will be passing in values, so first of all, string, ammo name, you can call it anything. I am an int quantity. All right. I'll get to it in a moment. First of all, I'll set the initial reference. So player master is get component that player master. Okay. Then set it in on enable, set initial references. Okay. And yes, uh, this void picked up ammo method. Uh, it's going to depend on a event. So it'll subscribe, be subscribed to an event. So player master dot event picked up ammo plus equal picked up ammo okay and unsubscribe now we haven't implemented this yet there's nothing where uh, well there's nothing causing any ammo to be picked up so that'll come later that'll come later when we've implemented like weapons uh, well the guns so then we'll actually have a script uh, that actually uh, will call this event and make this all happen. So then the actual ammo will get passed to the uh, player's ammo box. But in the meantime, we just have the structure there. Uh, that's all it is at the moment. Okay, so now I've got to type up the uh, picked up ammo. So let's say uh, the player picked up ammo. So somehow some values have been passed in an ammo name and a quantity well the logical thing to do is I want to store all that information in this list right I want to uh, keep a value of the current ammo carried inside of this list so what I need to do is I need to search through the list go through the list and find out if there is an entry an ammo name entry because this list has one of its values is ammo name oh well, a string rather I should look through the list to find out if there's another string that matches the supplied value. If I find a match, that means I need to add this ammo quantity, this quantity, to the current carried ammo. And then I also need to check that, you know, I'm not trying to put too, carry too much ammo. I'm not trying to carry more than the max ammo. If I am, then just set the current carried ammo to the max ammo. Uh, and then, uh, I would also need to update the UI on the gun or the bazooka so that it's showing the correct amount of uh, max bullets or rockets. But that's another story that will come later. Uh, but I can at least have the whole framework just waiting there. So I'll write here for int i equal to zero i less than types of ammunition dot count i plus plus so this is how i'm going to of course iterate through uh, the types of ammunition list then i will check if types of ammunition which index the well whichever one i'm iterating through uh, dot ammo name is equal to uh, the ammo name being supplied then that means we've found a match if that is the case then types of ammunition i dot current carried ammo uh, plus equal quantity so add the quantity of picked up ammo to this one here in the list okay now I just need to check if types of ammunition oops types of ammunition I dot current carried ammo if it's greater than the max ammo so types of ammunition because you know you can't have an infinite well you could but uh, in my case I won't have the player being able to carry an infinite number of uh, rockets or anything like that there's a defined max number 
And if they try to carry more than that, if they pick up like a big ammo box, or an ammo crate or something that has lots of rockets in it, well, it'll only, they'll only take as much into their ammo box as they're able to carry. And that is the uh, max quantity. So if their current ammo exceeds the max, then types of ammunition i dot current carried ammo is going to be equal to types of ammunition i dot max quantity. All right. And that should do that. And I will just call an event here. So I'll say player master dot call event ammo change. You won't see the effect of this right now. This is much later. What's going to happen is that the guns will look at the player master. They'll have some sort of script on them, which will subscribe to the player master call event ammo change. And when this is called, that script on the gun will update the UI that is attached to the gun so that the correct number of bullets for the carried amount is shown in the UI for that weapon. So you will see that much later. At least it's all there. And then since I've found the entry in the in this list, you know, I'm iterating through it. I found what I've wanted to do and I've done all this stuff inside of that. Uh, I shouldn't keep on iterating through the list, like going through the other entries. So I've already found what I'm looking for. So that would be wasteful, a uh, waste of resources. So just break and get out of the for loop because I'm done. I've done what I needed to do. And uh, that is pretty much it. So that is the ammo box script complete. And I can't think of anything else I need to do with it. So how about I go to Unity and check for errors. Doesn't look like there are any, which is good. Uh, I'll attach it. And you can see straight away uh, the list here, types of ammunition. And it's waiting for me to define it. Because I have to define this in the inspector. It's the logical way to do it in my case. Well, it's what I prefer to do anyway. And so I can define as many weapons as I feel like. Now, what will happen? So let me just quickly just put some like two entries, element zero. You can see ammo name, for example, pistol. I could say 300. 30 is the current ammo carry. That's how much the player starts with. Then I could define another weapon and do that as well. Uh, so that's it. So the, and then the weapon that the player carries will have some script on it that also defines it as being a pistol. And then so it'll just all work when it comes to reloading. Uh, but anyway, that I'm getting off track. What I wanted to show was um, this system dot serializable. So if I uh, comment that out and uh, come back, then you'll see that it disappears. A class must have that attribute above it system dot serializable in order for any public variables of it to be shown in the inspector. So that's just something to remember. So I'll go back and comment that out because I want to be able to define it in the inspector. I don't want to hard code uh, these uh, ammunition types. So to start with, I'll just put one there and call it pistol. And I'll put there 300. The player is going to start with 30, but we're not going to see this till way later. When we get to weapons, to guns in particular, and then I'll add in more types of ammunition. But that's all another story for another time. Uh, so thanks for watching, and we've got another video for this chapter to go. Yes, so thanks for watching, and see you then.